Welcome to The Reset. My name is Chad and I'm here on a quick overnight trip with some friends and we are looking at the backdrop here of Roosevelt Lake in central Arizona. It was awesome opening the tent this morning and seeing that view. Um, I'm joined by Orion, Frank and Dennis. Uh, you guys have seen them on past videos and we all get together about once or twice a year and when we do Frank always brings his um, travel trailer. He's got that thing all tricked out really cool but that being said whenever I'm uh, camping with Frank we are typically at a designated campground um, as opposed to a dispersed boondocking spot that you're probably used to seeing on dirt road reset but nonetheless it was a good reason to get out for the weekend and enjoy some time in mother nature. Frank also brought with him his ham radio gear so I'll take you on a tour of that and we'll go check that out in a little bit and tinker around with a little bit. Stay tuned. The plant we have here, which is uh, a native plant to the uh, desert southwest region of the United States, is called the American threefold. Pretty common. It's non edible. It's actually related to the sunflower plant. Uh, however, it doesn't resemble that at all. This bush here will grow at about three feet. Um, these are a lot of times seen in common landscaping, but it is native to Arizona, like I said. Um, and uh, you can usually see them nestled underneath a, um, a parent plant that's completely unrelated to it, like this one here. This is a, um, a, a goat nut bush here. This one is somewhat edible. The seeds can be edible. They're not very um, palatable, but they are edible. Uh, more commonly, the seeds from the uh, goat nut here are used as a alternative to whale oil. Um, and they use it for cosmetics and candles and anything uh, to do with uh, needing wax and, and oil substances. So two very common uh, plants that you see when roaming the deserts of Arizona. There are no nuts for me to eat right now. Let's go see what Frank's doing and see if he's working the radio or not. Hey, big guy. Hey. Frank's working a mode called PSK right now. It's a digital mode through high frequency uh, radio, so the, 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 sh the shortwave bands. We're in the 14 megahertz region right now and sending a digital signal and it comes in the software decodes that digital signal and they talk back and forth that way and we get points for for doing that you having fun yeah it's going good got a, it's quieted down the past few minutes um i did find that i had a noise filtering on with oh okay that causes some problems yeah <laughs> but i'm trying to see if i can get some more contacts here it's you know, it's gotten a little quiet. Yeah. Might be starting to get uh, time to switch down to uh, 40 meters right before long. Yeah, that means I'll have to go trim the antennas again. One of the coolest things about camping with other people, and in particular people that you don't camp with very often, is admiring their ingenuity when it comes to uh, making things work. Check this out. And these are magnets that he's got his bungee cords to hold the uh, tarp. And as you can see in there. Taking pictures of my mess. <laughs> Taking pictures of your mess. <laughs> is that that This new is one? Dennis. This is me? Yeah.
And no camping meal is complete without dessert of fresh blueberries and my favorite chocolate in the whole world. Tony's chocolate, you can't find this many places. I think REI has it, um, and specifically the 70% dark chocolate. Tony's. Those two things together. Mm. 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 The key is you gotta put the chocolate in your mouth and then a handful of berries. Oh. Look at that view. I threw my travertine the other day from the backyard. Just boom, went right yeah, through right it there. and got yep. it. Yep. And some stuff like that over the several months. Well, turning in for the night, uh, we just sat around the campfire for a little bit and talked about uh, what the future holds for the Ham Radio Club. And uh, got some good ideas. I think we'll be uh, doing a lot more of the Ham Radio stuff. Uh, and integrating it in with uh, some more dispersed camping uh, stuff. So I, I I don't know if you guys are interested in that or not, but I like doing it. And um, I've always said from the beginning that with this YouTube channel, I'm not really doing it to make money or get sponsors or free products. I'm doing it more as a journal anyway, but it is an added bonus. I've met a lot of really cool people by having this channel. And... Um, and I enjoy the comments. I enjoy reading uh, what you guys think of it and and knowing uh, possibly that uh, I'm making somewhat of a difference when it comes to, you know, bringing awareness to just how good nature is for the mind and, um, and maybe helping people that way. But, um, man, it is toasty in here. It is... Uh, I just turned the diesel heater on and it's already... 60 degrees in here it's probably mid 40s out there it's not too cold but there's a wind chill factor out there it feels freezing so but I've got the diesel heater on the number four setting right now I think I'm going to turn it down to the number one just because that's the, the one advantage to this canvas tent is it heats up super quick um, but on the topic of this tent I've now had it for a year um, I've used it on quite a few trips, and guys, I gotta honestly tell you, and, and before I even go into this, uh, full disclaimer, um, I did get this tent for a massive discount. I think I got 50% off. Um, um, Kodiak reached out to me and asked if I would showcase some videos and give my opinion. I said yes. Um, there were no contracts or anything like that, which is good. I'll only do it if there's little stipulations like that or if there aren't any stipulations like that. Um, but when I am sent something, um, especially if it's something for free, I make it very clear to these people that I'm going to give a very unbiased and honest review. Um, even if it's something that I don't like. And a lot of times I'm offered things that I don't take right off the bat because I know it's something I'm A, not going to use, or just I can tell it's going to be junk. Um, but this is one of those cases where I really want to like this tent. The... Um, the quality and the materials are outstanding. This tent will outlive me. However, I can't think of a single situation really where a ground tent wouldn't be just as good. And that's the truth. Um, especially for the money. I mean, I think these tents are around $500 new online up to 600 in some places. Um, for that amount of money, you can get a ground tent that goes up in less time and it is just as good in the weather and then you can use your vehicle um, the biggest caveat with this tent is the fact that it has no floor attached to it if it had a tub a floor attached like the Napier did I think it'd be a winner but for me you're gonna be seeing a lot less of this tent um, I haven't decided if I'm even gonna sell it yet or not I'm probably gonna keep it um, and maybe in, in the rare instance, I'll, I'll bring it out just because I, it's something different. But truth be told, it's kind of a pain to set up and put together. And it just, and despite it being the right tent for this truck bed size, it just, it doesn't fit quite right. Um, 
And the fact that it doesn't have a tub means there's there's gaps on the bottom. And I, you've seen me camp in this tent in heavy snowstorms, and it, I was I was warm and dry. Um, I just wonder, like, if it were a big snowstorm and a lot of wind, how good it would really do. So it just goes back to what I was saying. I I've got plenty of other tents that I think would do just as good. And if I'm if you're gonna go out there, you or me, and spend full price for a tent you could get a, a Kodiak ground tent that's canvas that's around the same price range that's just as roomy and by the way this is a very roomy tent I can stand up in this thing and I'm five foot ten inches tall um, but you can buy a ground tent that essentially does the same thing even you know and canvas isn't what I've learned over the years is canvas isn't absolutely necessary um, it's great for dry climates like this but you get a good high denier nylon tent and it's going to be just as good um, and probably be better actually um, for packing and weight and whatnot so at the end of the day my verdict is would I recommend this tent probably not um, just because at my age and uh, the amount of camping that I do I am all about comfort and ease of setup and the comfort is is probably three out of five stars there, are four out of five, but the ease of setup is not. And I'm definitely on the search for a tent that will hold the kids and I with their disco bunk beds, and that means I need a tent that is at least seven feet long, has a straight wall, and is seven feet long on one end. And that's hard to find. I've been looking at the, uh, the Gazelle tents, and the T4 hub is not big enough. Um, and I like that footprint because it was smaller. The next size up is the T6 or the T4 Plus, and then you're getting kind of long, and you have to find a bigger space. I've got my eyes on a tent right now, and if you guys have seen this or you have experience with it more so, put in the comments down below. I'm really interested in learning more about the Space Acacia XL tent. It is a four to six person um, pop-out tent, kind of like the ice fishing huts, sort of similar to the Gazelle, same concept. But unlike the Gazelle, it has a higher denier rating, and it actually has the square door opening as opposed to the Gazelles that have the triangular doors, which, again, is a big downside to the Gazelles because the kids, they're going to be tripping coming. I mean, I trip going into a regular tent, and so um, that thing might be pretty horrendous. But... I definitely need a tent that is big enough to hold the uh, the bunk beds, myself, and maybe even another person that isn't too massively large and, again, doesn't take um, two hours to set up. If you got some good ideas, leave them in the comments below. I'm going to bed, and we'll see you in the morning. Bye-bye. And whatever you do, don't suggest the Coleman Instant Tent. Garbage. I know. Been there, done that. Well, and just like that, we've got uh, eight hours of sleeping. Not really, I wish. Uh, I slept better last night than I did the night before, but it got really windy last night. Um, I woke up a couple times from these... When I'm camping, I have weird dreams. Or not necessarily weird dreams, but very vivid dreams. I've noticed that lately. When I'm at home, rarely do I wake up remembering any of the dreams I had. When I'm camping, I do. Um, but um, it got really windy last night. Stayed a cozy 71 degrees in here, 72 degrees. Had the diesel heater on one, the lowest setting possible. And I've been up for a little bit. Yeah, I haven't been outside yet, but I've been up. So, and I, I've been contemplating what I said just a few seconds ago for you, but for me, nine hours ago. Um, about this tent and how I wouldn't ultimately recommend it for me. That opinion still holds. Um, however, 
I'm going to keep the tent. And um, you'll see another video or two in it. Uh, probably not for a little while. But I got to thinking two things. One, with that wind last night, it did fine. I didn't feel any drafts. Um, it wasn't very noisy at all. So that's a, a plus to this tent because um, it's so rigid. Like these steel tubing uh, poles, very heavy duty, uh, keep it pretty tight. But I had this aha moment when uh, I got to thinking about Dennis's setup over there with his just his tarp and how he used those magnets on the side. And those aren't very expensive. Um, I wonder if I got like eight of those magnets and I used those to pretty much form a better seal around the outside of the truck bed tent. Um, people are going to say in the comments down below, well, you're off the ground. That's the biggest advantage to this tent. I think that's a little overrated if I were to be honest, and, and I am, uh, because if I were in a ground tent, I'd be on a cot. To me, the trade-off of being way off the ground in the back of your truck, as opposed to being, again, off the ground in a cot on the ground tent, are negligible. It's just not that big of a, of a, a trade-off to warrant um, doing it this way. I loved camping in my Napier, but again, the Napier was very easy to set up. I could set that thing in, up in under five minutes, and it had a full tub. Now, granted, the uh, materials the Napier were made of were a fraction of the quality of these, but it was just easier, and that's what's made me realize over the years that I really value, and you could be different, okay? This is just my personal opinion and what my needs are, or what suits me. Um, my needs and, and likes and wants might differ from yours. But for me, ease of setup and comfort are number one. And the Napier did check that box. We put that Napier through snow. We've go back. That's a great video. It's been one of our, my, it's got half a million views. It's been our most popular video from a couple years ago when Scott and I took the Napier truck tent in a blizzard. And it did okay. Yeah, it was cold, but I didn't have a diesel heater back then. I used a buddy heater, which I would never recommend inside a truck bed tent um, because of the condensation that it creates. But with a diesel heater being a dry heat, I think the Napier would have still done fine. Um, but the big thing is just the setup time. So wrapping it all up, uh, I'm going to keep the tent. I want to try those mag the, the magnets. Um, if Kodiak is watching or somebody is watching that has a little bit of influence over at Kodiak, um, design one of these tents with a floor bed. Keep the price point the same because this is an expensive tent for what it is. That's the downside to it. I don't think it's worth the money that they charge it, charge for it regularly online. Put a floor on it. Um, keep the price about the same or lower. And make, um, to my understanding, they only make two sizes of this tent. They make one for truck beds that are uh, five and a half to six and a half feet in length and then they make another one for the longer beds Maybe one more for pickups like smaller trucks, but they need to make a wider Series of these tents that specifically fit specific truck beds sizes And then I think you have a, a winning product uh, Keep in mind like this is a five and a half foot bed So a lot of people are thinking well if I'm five foot ten or I'm six foot then it's definitely not gonna work That's false um, these truck bed tents typically, this one included, um, utilize the full length of your tailgate as well. So it goes well past that. This, I think, extends out to about six and a half feet. So there's plenty of room there. Well, we've reached my least favorite part of the trip, and that is packing everything up. Listen, if you like this content, um, please, by all means, leave a comment down below. I love reading comments. Give me your suggestions on um, any other tents that might be out there that I should probably consider looking into. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting something that uh, I can share with you guys and give my thoughts on. But by all means, leave a comment down below on what your experiences are with the Kodiak Canvas truck tent or anything else that you might be using. Um, love the comments. But uh, while you're at it, hit that like and subscribe button down below with the bell notifications. If you're feeling really generous 
and I know you are, <laughs> uh, please consider heading over to our Patreon page and becoming a Patreon subscriber or a channel supporter here on YouTube. If you or someone you know is suffering from anything that's racking the mind, anything, and that could be stress, anxiety, depression, addiction, PTSD, postpartum, anxiety, I mean, I don't know if I said that or not, but I mean, it could be anything. And uh, you're, you're just sick and tired of being sick and tired. By all means, it's our job to break the stigma surrounding these mental illnesses, and that's what they are. And your mental health is very important. Get the professional help that you and your loved ones rightfully deserve. And that starts with you and me breaking the stigma surrounding these, uh, these, these illnesses. Um, for me personally, and really the whole premise behind my channel is encouraging people to get outside, go outdoors, and using nature's medicine to help alleviate some of the symptoms that you might be having as a result of those aforementioned illnesses. It's worked for me. I'm pretty sure it'll work for you. Just get outside, explore nature, and find your dirt road to reset. We'll see you on the next adventure. Thanks, guys.